Hey guys, Dalton here from DC Collects. Today I'm going to be taking you guys on a tour of the fish room. We're going to be doing some water changes and I'm going to give you guys some tips along the way. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay guys, so here we go with our fish room update. I have not fed the fish since early, early this morning. So, they're out and about and we can get a good look at them and see how they're doing. Of course, he's going to hide behind the... No, here he comes. So here is... I think it's a spotted face pike cichlid. But if anyone knows any different, please let me know. I'd love to know exactly what this species is. It was basically just sold to me as a pike cichlid, as I've said before. But he's doing great. The Zingu pike cichlid's doing good. He is hiding under the wood. You can just see him take off there. And I believe his female counterpart is in the corner there, but they're both doing good. 75 gallon, everyone seems to be doing pretty good. Here's my yellow jacket we couldn't get a look at last time. She's doing great. She's the one who had my babies, so she was a little sad to be separated, but I think she's okay now. And there's my terror, firemouth, pike. And there's the convict coming in the... Oh, didn't chase the way. Again, doing good. Down below, we've got the babies. And they are all doing good as well. You can kind of see them swimming around in there. What I didn't show you guys last time is in my fish room. I am lucky enough to have a sink. So I decided to put my fish room in the basement, mainly because of weight restrictions upstairs. Um, I have a concrete floor in my basement, so it's good to hold pretty much as much as I want. But also lucky enough to have a sink down here. It makes water changes a breeze. Also lucky enough to have a mini fridge here. You can tell the teams that I cheer for. <laughs> but keep my frozen food in here. That's a lot of empty packets. Running a little low on frozen stuff. But yeah, super handy, guys. Really uh, recommend having a fridge slash freezer in the fish room. Also have my nourish and garlic guard. Also have my Mac. I'm gonna edit this video right after I'm done. I like having this down here, guys, because uh, I inevitably end up spending more time with my fish. And the more time you spend around your fish, the more you'll learn their habits, and the quicker you'll be able to notice if something's wrong with them because their behavior will change. So here is 120 gallon. And everyone in here is doing awesome. There's the Jag. He is definitely my favorite fish right now. <laughs> it varies. I say he, he's my favorite fish. It'll be a, someone else next week. I love them all. <laughs> There's my big male yellow jacket in the back. You can see the L600's tail again. <laughs> it's probably all we'll ever see of him. No, I'll get some shots for you guys when, one time when I see them out. But yeah, everyone's doing good in there. Our flower horn, I forgot to tell you guys, I named this guy Merlin actually, so we, we call this little guy Merlin. He seems to have a little purple in him and blue. I just think it suits him. Super cool. But yeah. So everyone's doing pretty good, um, awesome actually, but I'm just going to get the stuff ready for some water changes and I'll, I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, so I just want to show you guys quick before I get started here. This is my FX6, I always turn everything off by fo before I start the uh, water change every time. Um, the only thing I leave running is my sponge filter because it's perfect, it keeps the water oxygenated for the fish. 
Um, I do just want to show you guys. I found this is probably the cheapest uh, airline tubing that you can get. I think I got it off of Amazon. It was super, super cheap. I do not recommend buying that at all. Uh, spend a little bit more money, guys, and grab like Fluval brand, uh, something brand name. That stuff, it's it falls off. It's always coming disconnected from my uh, check valve. Uh, just super annoying. So I thought I'd show you guys that. Okay, guys. So I got my tank about 60% drained. Um, I do the 120 about 60% of the way. The other five tanks only about 50% of the way, and I do every single tank uh, once once a week. So I do a 50% water change once a week. Um, some people might be saying, "Holy dude, that's a lot of water!" Um, but let me tell you why I do this. So not only does it keep your water quality obviously pretty pristine. But um, the biggest cause of disease with fish is usually water quality or your fish being stressed. So the easiest way to prevent disease in your tanks, besides introducing new fish obviously, is to always keep your water quality pristine. Um, not only that, but like the sun for humans, so we absorb uh, vitamins and nutrients from the sun, uh, the water is a lot like that for the fish, so um, it's vital to their health as well. Um, I'm also just going to show you guys right now, um, I also take my handy dandy sponge and I make sure to clean around the rim. Um, this I do every single time I clean the tank. I make sure I clean the glass. If the glass is really dirty, guys, I take that right out of there. I'll even get a razor blade, scrape off all the gunk. I hate my tanks getting gunked up and messy. Um, some people will complain that fish tanks are smelly. They shouldn't be smelly, guys. If you're cleaning your tanks properly and maintaining everything when it should be maintained, it shouldn't smell at all. It should always, like, it, it shouldn't smell, so. <laughs> Yeah, so you just get uh, your sponge in there like that. Um, I always, I've already done it guys, but while this was draining, I also scrubbed down all the glass. Um, love the short sponge because I can get in there. Um, I have a lot more control uh, over how deep it goes. We really don't want to get grains of sand under there because if you put that between the glass and your sponge you're gonna scratch your glass and there's really no coming back from that especially with the glass tank so I also mentioned filters guys maintaining filters um, right now I have a schedule I usually clean my FX6's once every two months and my FX4 every two months as well hang on the back filters obviously get done um, a little bit more frequently but uh, I'm gonna have future videos on how to how I clean my FX6, my FX4, my hang on the backs, and I'm also going to have videos on how I built these DIY stands. I'm going to take you guys on a, a deep dive how I built these guys. I have two of them. My 120 is on one as well as my 75. They are super sturdy guys. You could literally park a car on them. I'm not even kidding. I say that so smash that like button smash that subscribe button and what I want you guys to do is go down in the comments and let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks on how did you guys change your water um, I'd love to learn from everyone else as well I'm always trying to learn as much as I can okay now that we got everything scrubbed down we got the tank emptied let's fill it back up but not before adding some of our Seachem Prime that's another tip guys, I do recommend trying to find this in bulk, you're going to save a bunch of money. I think I paid $60 Canadian for this 1.1 gallon jug of Seachem Prime. You're going to pay, I think it's $17.99 Canadian at PetSmart for a 500 milliliter bottle. So this is a big time bang for your buck. 
So let's get that filled up and we'll see you guys when we're done. So we got our Seachem Prime in. We're filling our tank back up. I also just wanted to mention the reason I didn't do any gravel backing, I have sand actually, so I didn't do any vacuuming on the bottom of my tank is because actually between my FX6 canister filter and my wave maker that I have in this tank, it keeps the circulation flowing enough that the tank rarely needs a vacuuming. So that's another quick tip. Um, placement of where your wave maker is and your intake for your filter can make a big difference on how much cleaning you have to do for your tank. Okay guys, so we're all finished up with our water change. I got the wave maker plugged back in, both heaters, my FX6, everything's back up and running. There is still a little bit of stuff floating around the tank right now. Uh, like I said, my wave maker pushes it around and it'll be looking crystal in the morning. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and we'll catch you in the next one.